Hello, today we're going to talk about Trance Engine, which is the second plugin I've reviewed from Follow Your Sound. Um, about a week ago, I reviewed the House Engine VST, and unbeknownst to me, Trance Engine has just recently been released, so I thought I'd check that out too. Now, I really liked House Engine, and I went and bought it. It was about 40 something dollars. Now, Trance Engine has a special deal going where if you buy it, say, by I think mid-December, you will get a 20% discount. So that's a really great introductory offer. It's already pretty cheap at about $40. So if you can get 20% off of that, that's pretty cool. If you actually own another Follow Your Sound plugin like House Engine, which is what I did, I actually got a 50% discount. And if you own the Pro version, which is the one that allows you to create and sell MIDI files, that's about 300 and something dollars, but you can get a 40% discount on that. Now I've got all of the discount codes in the description. So at the end of this video, if you want to purchase this product, click on the link. By the way, it's an affiliate link, so it supports me and my channel, but also use those discount vouchers to buy the product. I can only tell you as of November that those discounts are available until December. I can't tell you what's going to happen after December and they probably won't work after December. So if you want to buy it, I guess this is the, this is the time to buy it. If you don't want to get it now, it may cost the full price, but once again, it's not a big problem. So let's start with this trans engine. Let's see what it's like. It is the same in my opinion with a few subtle changes it is the same application as house engine it has the same look and feel it pretty much has the same functionality as house engine and it's still as easy to use now you can just start by dropping a midi chord progression over here but what i like to do is click on generate chord progressions so let's just do that and if you press the space button straight away you'll hear the chords and they are chords played in a piano sound Okay, so if you are not sure about those chords, you don't like those chords, you can do several things. First one is you can just click on one of the chords themselves and right click on that. Do something like invert up or down. So invert also, all that means is it will take one of the notes and bring it down an octave. So they're exactly the same note. So let's invert it down. So the top note is going down. Let's just do it down again. Top note goes down. So we can work that way or we could invert it back up or we could bring the bass note up an octave. We can transpose all the notes up and down a semitone. I'm not going to do that now. And we can bring the whole chord octave up. So that's not too bad, but what we can do is more stuff. We can randomly select more and more, and there's just a lot of different choices available. So let's just randomly choose this one. So I don't like this chord because it is playing the second and fourth chords at, they're identical. By the way, I wanted to also say that it's gonna always play in A minor and that's because I've selected A minor. I could select another chord and the reason why it's always playing in A minor is because I've gone and locked the scale. And it remembers your setting, right? So if you close this program and go back into it, it will remember that you've locked scale. But if you unclick lock scale and then regenerate chords, it'll generate chords in any random scale, whether that be major or minor. So I'm just gonna go back and lock that to A minor. Generate another chord. So that's not too bad, but say I want to use a chord that I like, that I've already produced, that I want to find, say, an arpeggio for or a bass line for. This is a pretty good way to do it. What we can do is load other chords and then import a chord that you want to use. So I've already got this chord here, for example. That's just going to load a predefined chord that I created myself. It had nothing to do with the program. The reason why this is important is because this is the base set of chords that the rest of the song is going to follow. So once you've selected your chords, then you just press OK. You've got a few different Different options here. So these options will not only give you the certain sounds that you're looking for, but also provide a instrument, almost like a test instrument that you can use. So for example, if you click on bass and just pick one of these bass sounds, it'll play the bass in the chord set that you've already chosen. So let's just listen to that. And it's playing it with a bass instrument. 
Now, as far as I understand, you can't actually change any of these instruments. So there's just going to be very basic vanilla type of instruments, but they do sound good together. So let's just try pad. So pad doesn't sound too bad either, actually. So by the way, you can select more than one tag, but it will limit your options. So we just select pad. We just simple chords. Let's try full simple chords. So it just adds a bass line to the chords. Now you could use simple chords in the track, you can use full simple chords at the beginning of the track. So you can see here where we're going, we can use different types of pad arrangements with the same chords throughout the song, and you can use this engine to help you. So say for example, we want thin chords in the song. Or large chords. But for now, let's just stick with simple chords. Now that I've got those there, I'm just going to duplicate that because it's going to inherit the chords from the previous track. But instead of clicking pad, we're going to go into bass. We're going to create a bass line, basically. <laughs> basically. So I've noticed there's two types of bass lines. One where the note is repeating all the time, and that is a tension type of scale. So for example, let's just take a listen to this. And that's almost like synth wave, you know, like 80s <laughs> style. And then obviously there are some here that follow the chord. Let's just try maybe something a bit more intri intricate, this one here. So even though this is a trance engine, you know, you can get a vibe here for 80s type music, for synth wave type music. It's just more than trance. It's super useful. If you want to just make trance music, then that's cool. You can go in and use the trance sounds, but you, you can use this for any style that you want. We've selected our bass sound. We're going to just duplicate that and we're going to try for a pluck sound. When I tried this earlier, chords, chords were like pluck sounds as well as plucks. So, uh, so let's just try chords first. Let's try another one. Just to differentiate between them, we're just going to duplicate that and select plucks. See, I think it might be a different sound, but it's very similar types of chords, really. So we're not going to bother with that, but what we will do is put in a melody track. Now, if you think that's over complex, you can do lots of things. For example, you could slow down the weights played. So let's just click on half. You can also change the octave. You can reduce the octave. And increase the octave. And we can also introduce some swing at the 16th note. So let's do that. Now let's add another instrument. So we're going to duplicate that. It's going to inherit all of these swing and other settings. So let's just take that out. Let's try ostinato. But we'll just put that at the original sound a bit lower. So one can be played uh, at the beginning and then the other one can be played afterwards. And at this point, we can add some kick drums and some top line loop. And further to that, we can add some side chain. That's why I grouped everything together so we could side chain the entire track. Now, if you like that, you can just insert an audio track and take the group here. You can route the group into the audio track and then just record that. Let's 
So let's just solo that just to hear what we did. So once it's in audio, you can do all sorts of modifications to it. But if you want to record every track separately, you can just do, just change the routing. So instead of group, you could just go to the first trance engine and record. Just take the solo off. And as you can hear here, it's just recorded the pad sound. You can be ultra surgical here, so you can just duplicate this audio uh, several times. So it's going to inherit the settings of the previous audio. So for the first track, that's fine. For this one here, we want to make sure it goes to Trans Engine 5. This one, Trans Engine 6. And so we can just press multiple record. So that's just pressing the control key and recording all of the tracks at the same time. We can record them all in one go now. And let's just solo them just to hear what we recorded. Then we can have all sorts of creative fun, really. We can start without the pad. We can start without... We can make it super funky at the beginning. We can start with... We can move the pad piece to the beginning by itself. Like this. It's a bit of drum at the beginning. So let's start again. At this stage, we can actually remove transension and just build the entire track. We just group this again and place a sidechain on the entire track. Okay, so that's it from me. Um, I was having a lot of fun there, so I stopped talking near the end. But as you can see, it is pretty much just a song starter, but it has all the things you need, all the chords you need, and you have complete control over the key and the sounds. I'm using the stock sounds out of the system, but you could use any DST plugins you want because at the end of the day, it's just MIDI. So thank you very much for getting this far. Any questions, put them in the comments or in the description, and I will be happy to help. Thanks, bye.